So Sir Charles, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, you are the director of the Oxford Martin School, also the director of the Future Food Programme. And so I'm curious to ask you about what are the key research areas for your group uh, at the moment related to food? So what we do in the Future of Food is to try and bring together all the research in the university that is addressed about making a global food system that is both sustainable, is healthy and is more equitable. The way I like to think it, I think about it, is that we need to do things on consumption, especially in the rich world where our environmental footprint for the food we eat is enormous. We need to do things in production. We need to produce more food and we need to do it in new ways, sustainable ways. We need to bed down on waste. We waste a lot of food, but never falling into the trap of thinking um, food waste is a silver bullet. Mm. And we need to think about global food governance, something that has really come to the fore uh, after Putin's invasion of, of Ukraine. Fantastic. And, and that actually answers already the, the second question I had for you, which is, which was, you know, why should we think about this with a systems approach as opposed to think about food or nutrition? Um, now, I understand according to some studies, food systems as a whole are responsible for about a third of greenhouse gas emissions, depending on the estimates, but um, really large size of deforestation, fresh water withdrawals, uh, biodiversity loss, and also soil degradation. Now, as I understand it, this is the status quo as we have to feed a population of around 8 billion people. Um, how can we think of a transformation as we have also a growing population? What would that look like in the future? Can we feed 10 billion people in a more sustainable way? We know what we have to do. I think as Nick Stearns, who said a few years ago, the most efficient way of getting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is to cut down green, cut down tropical rainforests, drain peatlands and things like that. So we have to really work on um, on, the, on land use change. Mm -hmm. We have to be honest in that if we are not going to convert land to agriculture, then we're going to have to produce more from that footprint. Mm -hmm. I like to call this sustainable intensification. So one needs to produce more from the same footprint with less environmental impact. And <clears throat> I do get sometimes irritated with people who think you can have it all. You can go to wonderful, idyllic, um, extensive farming Mm -hmm. um, and yet still uh, feed, feed the world. So my, I'll give two priorities. One is uh, stopping land use conversion to agriculture. Um, the other is um, if we look at the food types that have the greatest uh, greenhouse gas emissions, they are meat and dairy. Mm -hmm. And we are going to have to consume less of that mm -hmm. if we are going to go to net zero. Um, that to me is a real agenda for the middle and higher income countries um, and I really want to stress that uh, it would be the height of ethical malfeasance to sort of try and argue that a pastoralist in northern Kenya mm. uh, who's uh, actually both culture and nutrition depend on his or her uh, flock of goats or cattle or things like that. So one has to be very careful that this is a middle and rich world thing. I, I, I'm not a believer in techno fixes, but we are going to see technological advances really making a difference. <laughs>